Alright hey everybody, this is Dan Murphy from Blue and Gold Illustrated, joined with my senior editor here, Lou Samoji. Notre Dame just finished beating Navy 38-34 here in South Bend. Back and forth game, 10 lead changes. Notre Dame ended up coming back in the fourth quarter and freshman Perry and Polson scores a big game winning touchdown. Lou, what are your instant kind of right away takeaways after this? There's been one game in Notre Dame history where it did not commit a penalty and did not commit a turnover. That was at LSU when they won in Death Valley, not 24-6 in 1997. Navy did that today. They did not commit a penalty. They did not commit a turnover. They had the ball about 38 minutes compared to 22 for Notre Dame. They probably play about as perfect a game as you could ask for in, in this situation, and especially with Notre Dame getting banged up defensively survive in advance. I know it's November, that's all it is right now, survive in advance. Right, you think back and the one mistake that I can kind of think of is that fumble that they ended up falling on and recovering, but it yep. still hurt them enough and set them exactly. back to kind of end that last drive and end that last scoring threat. And without that, I don't know if Notre Dame slows them down because they did so well converting the third downs, even fourth down conversions. Did a tremendous job and from the aerial view, that reverse fall to the hitch there, you look at it and said, that's a touchdown written all over it. Fortunately, Isla Hardy was able to string it out and then Jalen Smith was able to clean it up there. So, huge. It was, it was really huge. Right. I think when you're thinking about takeaways and those type of things, my biggest takeaway is you really can't take much from the past two weeks. I mean, you beat Air Force 45-10, you just sneak by Navy, but both of them are just so different than the normal pace of a football game and what you're used to playing that you, know, there's, you kind of just win them and then you throw them in the drawer and you move on to the next thing and you, and you hope you get healthy enough to keep going and uh, win these next three games and have a chance to keep going if you're Notre Dame. That's what you just want to be, 7-2. and two. Uh, Look. We don't, we're not into any delusions that they're going to beat Alabama or Florida State or anything like that. All you can do is win the game this week and see where it you know, plays out at the end. Yeah. Just give yourself a chance, though, every week. And then, of course, you know the, the defensive line and defensive front seven in general banged up after these two weeks playing guys diving into the knees and ankles. That was something Notre Dame sort of anticipated. They set out some of their guys. You know, it kind of makes them sitting Lewis Nix maybe look a little bit smarter, not not having to put him in jeopardy there. And you probably got him healthy coming back next week. But uh, they were able to piece things together, and we hope it wasn't too big of a hit for them. Yeah, they've reached their threshold right now as far as that front seven. They've lost Grace. You know, they've lost. Dave for a while, I know Schwenke Schwenk, was out there a little bit. Stefan Tuart is just, you know, beginning to come into his own too after recovering from his offseason surgery. Hopefully you get Lewis Nix back. I, I think that was very important to rest of these past two weeks. So you, you just hope for that final push. You have enough healthy bodies out there. That's our first take here after this one. Again, Notre Dame 38-34 advances to 7-2. They'll take on Pittsburgh next week in Pittsburgh. Uh, for Blue and Gold Illustrated, this is Dan Murphy and Lou Samoji. Thanks for joining us.